Hello, this is Adam from Wheel Guns for Wheel Men, and today we're going to be talking about the Taurus TX-22 competition and my initial impressions after putting 160 rounds through it. So, first thing I will say, I love this gun. This is exactly what I've been looking for for years in a 22 pistol. And one of the nice things about this, which it's a, it's a pretty cheap gun, it's 430 bucks, that's not much. Um, it is a 22. But still, that's a good deal for what you get, including this case. As you can see, it actually has a cutout for the red dot. For those of you who don't don't buy a lot of uh, guns that have red dot capabilities, um, this is actually the first firearm I've purchased that has a red dot mount uh, and or a slide cut for a red dot that actually comes with a case that has a little cutout in the foam. For the red dot my lean and tactical beretta came in a standard 92g case probably because they did the cutting themselves so that makes sense um the gun came to them in the same case i'm assuming and that gun wasn't cut for red dot so i didn't need that however um i've had one or two other firearms that are red dot capable uh, and they also didn't have cutouts and so it's been kind of just annoying so i liked that little feature um, and the case itself is nice, has two little latches, it's a pretty durable little plastic case. Also, because the competition model, they know that we need lots of ammo on us, on our belt, on our gun belt. Um, and so it comes with two spare mags, for a total of three mags. Also comes with a little mag loader thing. And then... Of course, the competition model is special in a couple ways. The standard, and I have a Bushnell RX S100 on here. Um, I'm not going to dwell too much on the red dot itself, but we do need to talk about the red dot a little bit, and of course, the mounting plate. So, this firearm does have a safety. It is clear. And... The thing that makes the competition special is one, it has a threaded barrel that is threaded and sticks out past the end of the slide with the slide and battery. Um, the normal TX-22 comes with a, a little adapter piece that you can put on if you want. If you have a suppressor, it has a little thread adapter that you can put on, but it doesn't. normally it comes with the barrel flush with the end of the slide. Um, but the, the other thing is, there's a red dot mounting plate that's mounted onto the top of the barrel. And the barrel's fixed, more or less. Has a little bit of play in it. Um, you can kind of, I can't see it, but I can hear it on my end and feel it. Uh, so there's some play, but for the most part it's fixed. It's not a tilting barrel design or a rotating barrel. Um, and the, uh, the iron sights work fine. I shot it with iron sights before I put a red dot on it. Uh, but you cannot use the iron sights with the red dot on it. I will note that. It does have a rail down here if you want to put a flashlight or something on it. Laser. But what I want to talk about is how reliable it is at cycling subsonic ammo. I have put seven types of ammo through this. A couple different types of Federal. A couple different types of Fiocchi. Um, CCI Standard as well as, I want to say, Remington, Subsonic, and one other one. Now, of all of these, um, if you go back and watch the video, the Range Day video, which I just posted, you know, just minutes, maybe hours before this video. I haven't done it yet, obviously. But I'm going to post them pretty much back-to-back. -back. So if you go and watch that, you'll see the very first round, um, the spin showcasing ejected, but a new one didn't chamber. Uh, that was the first shot with the suppressor on it. Could be, if anyone who knows how suppressors are, uh, the first shot's always a little louder, for instance, and that's presumably because the air in the suppressor is maybe a vacuum or not a vacuum. I'm actually not sure how it works, but the point is the first shot's different on suppressors. So I'll chalk it up to that. Could also have been me. I may not have seated the magazine fully or something. I don't know. But for the most part, uh, it cycled everything except for... Um, Fiocchi Super Subsonic Hollow Points. Um, they were the slowest feet per second of all the different ammo I ran through it. 
and that with that ammo it would not cycle it without a suppressor however with the back pressure from a suppressor um it cycled every even that ammo it cycled subsonic um barely sonic and then supersonic so all different types of ammo but the problem is if you use the 1200 feet per second and up ammo the the loud supersonic ammo uh the mounting plate itself has come loose three times and each time it was after running anywhere from 10 to 20 rounds of supersonic ammo however i've put 100 rounds of this ammo through it does it cause it to shake loose so this gun is clearly designed from what i can tell to be run with subsonic loads uh, the cci standard velocity which is 1070 feet per second it is very quiet when you have a suppressor it's also relatively quiet without a suppressor but not hearing safe but with a suppressor it is hearing safe and i, I really enjoy it um so yeah i put 100 rounds of the standard velocity cci through this and 60 rounds of the other like five or six types of ammo um what was i gonna say oh yes the not only did the the mounting plate itself come loose three times and i've tightened it back down and if you if you contact taurus it says to do 10 foot pounds or inch pounds 10 inch pounds of torque which is not very much. Uh, normally rails of different sorts are 25 to 40 inch pounds in my experience, having dealt with numerous pick rails uh, needing torque down. And so I think we're going to, and with this ammo, you don't need to, to use thread locker, I don't think. You know, if it can do 100 rounds, I'll, I'm just gonna keep using it and see how many rounds of CCI standard I can put through it without it coming loose. But if it comes loose again, I'm going to be putting uh, just blue Loctite on it, which is a relatively easy to work with thread locker. I have blue and red Loctite, but I'm not going to use red Loctite. Uh, I will say, though, um, this latest time I did torque it to 20 inch pounds, um, and it hasn't come loose using the CCI standard. Now, if you read the manual, it also says to torque whatever screws you get, which you can't see them because of the shadow, I don't think, but there are two screws mounting this red dot to the plate. Um, these two screws from the manufacturer, uh, they normally tell you to do 14, 15, 17 inch pounds, most red dots. Uh, this one said 15 inch pounds, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, I have it at 14 inch pounds, but it says don't do more than six inch pounds. And I'm not sure if it's because it's like really weak aluminum or something that Taurus is using for the, for the mounting plate that it's mounting into, but that was not enough. Like this red dot itself came loose almost automatically, like after 15 rounds. Uh, but after torquing it down to 14 inch pounds, you know, I did to the six pounds originally, it has not come loose. However, there are these little adapter plates which let you use basically whatever red dot you want on this, this mounting plate. So these little adapter plates sit into a cutout on the mounting plate, which I can't show you with it on, but you can probably see it. Maybe there's like a seam right here. So it goes from like here to here. So it's about that wide. And it's, you plop them on, oh, they're that wide. And they have different holes and little like dowel things, raised portions to fit different footprints. So you have delta point, which is um, what this Bushnell is. And then you have the RMR cuts and the Noblex slash like Vortex Venom slash Burst Fast Fire. And then I think a hollow sun slash something else. Uh, hollow sun is actually a couple different footprints, but there are four different ones. I didn't bother memorizing them because I didn't need to. <laughs> I just knew that they had the one I needed, which is the delta point, uh, the Leopold delta point footprint. And uh, and it works. Um, uh, it works okay. The reason I brought up the low mounting plates is one, to tell you that you can put all different types of red dots on it, but two, um, it's a little jiggly, uh, it's not a technical term, but uh, it has a little bit of play to it. And so I think I might take like a really thin piece of like tape or something and try to like tape the bottom just to add some thickness so that it doesn't have any play. But I'll let you know if I need to do that, if the red dot starts to lose zero or come loose and wobble, I will try to do that and I'll use 
blue lock cut on everything at that point. But for now, it's working. The red dot works fine. I got it for 75 bucks on sale on Amazon and it got like pretty bad reviews, but I'm assuming that was because people were trying to use a $75 red dot on like nine millimeter guns. Uh, but on a 22, it's held zero for a little over 100 rounds, 130 rounds, I think is what I, I think I only did the first 30 rounds without it. Um, and the video, the range day video was the first two, well, relatively full magazines. I put 15 in each there, I think 16 round mags, but I just put 15 because it was easier to count out of the box. Uh, and so I did two full mags in a row. That was 30 rounds in a row, all caught on camera over the course of like a minute and 10 seconds. Didn't lose zero. Um, the, the thumbnail for the video will show you the result of the 30 rounds into the target. So anyways, go check that out if you haven't. And I would highly suggest if you're looking to get into competitive shooting of any sort using 22 pistol, which they have competitive 22 shooting, um, Forge Tech, made this holster and it's really nice because uh, you can use it and it has a cutout for the red dot and it allows me to accommodate my suppressor so I can keep my suppressor on it. Um, with the suppressor you kind of have to rock it forward a little bit to pull it out. It's a little awkward but I'm happy with this with the holster. Anyways um, hopefully this has been helpful and if you're thinking about buying one of these now you have a little bit more info at least from my personal experience. Perhaps mine is just looser than others, but uh, to me, this is not really meant for high velocity sort of ammo. It's meant more for being a suppressor host, which is what I was looking for, something that would cycle sub loads reliably um, and be very quiet. And so I'm, I'm, I'm extremely pleased. Uh, I think this is one of the best value pistols. Also, the ergonomics, it's actually pretty nice. Um, it reminds me somewhat uh, when I'm when I'm gripping it, it reminds me somewhat of a CZ almost, uh, like a CZ Shadow. Uh, it's not quite the same, but it has a feel that's similar. Uh, and I, I I shoot this gun very well. It was very intuitive, like right out of the box. I also have a short, which were I had a short of like my first five or six shots I ever took with it, um, and I was doing pretty well just right off the bat with the iron sights. So, anyways, um, five out of five stars. Uh, great job. I love it. And it's very impressive for a Taurus, and it's an amazing value. So if you're looking into buying a 22, especially one with a red dot uh, mounting capability or to be a suppressor host, I would definitely consider this one. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe.